Okay, um, just give me a few uh, sentences, a few seconds to introduce Deborah. Uh, so we are very happy that you are here today. Um, Deborah is head of the Helmholtz Imaging Support Unit at the Max Dell uh, Delbruck Center for Molecular Medicine in Berlin. And her team develops and maintains Album, a decentralized distribution platform for digital solutions to specific scientific problems. She is media computer scientist, experience in um, basic research data analysis, human computer interaction, computer vision, deep learning, data visualization, and generative graphics. Furthermore, she is passionate about open science, frugal science, citizen science, and decentralized systems. In her talk, Deborah will explore openly accessible strategies and technologies for user-friendly replicability based on experience acquired with the Helmholtz Imaging Platform. So once again, welcome Deborah, and the stage is yours. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. I'm uh, really glad um, to be invited here and to get to know you all a bit better. Um, yes, I'm Deborah Schmidt. I will talk about replicability along the imaging pipeline and uh, in our context, what that could mean is, for example, what you see here uh, is a 3D reconstructed uh, PIPSAM data set where we work together with the scientists, uh, Andreas Müller et al, on uh, making a protocol available to the community to generate segmentations that you can then spatially analyze and visualize with Blender. And uh, I will talk today about replicability challenges that we face along the way. Now, at, uh, to, so to get us all on the same page, what do I mean when I say we work for Helmholtz Imaging? Helmholtz Imaging is a Helmholtz incubator platform with the aim to unlock the potential of imaging in the entire Helmholtz Association. There is funding coming from all the centers into the units at the DKFZ, the DESI, and the MDC. There are two units, uh, each uh, and each of these platform, uh, research unit and the support unit. And we are here to provide and to find general solutions along the imaging pipeline for the whole community. That means please um, really reach out to us so that we make sure that we fit the needs of the community with what we are working on. The imaging pipeline starts at the beginning with data acquisition and goes along towards um, data management, data analysis, visualization, but also validation and dissemination. And there's really no question too big or too small to ask at the, our help desk email address, please reach out to us. Typical questions could be, for example, how do I suppress noise in my images? How do I deal with Omero? Do you have experience with that? Or how do I publish my data set as a challenge? And we might work there as a, as a broker to find the right expert for you in the community. Or we might uh, help you with like, just looking at your data and talking about it. Or we could go into a longer collaboration if this is something that the whole community benefits from. And this is all free of charge for the Hammers community. Now let's talk about some challenges that we face on the way here. And I will just mention what we use or what we think could be useful in order to tackle them. This is not necessarily stuff that we all maintain, but I think it's good to talk about. And uh, yes. So um, at the very beginning, we have a very diverse community. And this is a question that I ask at the visualization seminar I gave a while ago, which data set formats do you work with? And uh, it's a very diverse set of, um, set of standards. And that also means that when we work uh, with applications that they not necessarily are compatible and that we are facing a very diverse way of uh, storing metadata, which leads to uh, conflicts and errors in downstream analysis. Tools that are extremely useful here are, for example, central repositories for storing the data that manage to um, synchronize and, and, and um, standardize metadata, such as Omero. This is a, a huge initiative by the Open Microscopy community, and they also manage the bioformat software for writing image data and reading image data in a standardized open fashion. They are other initiatives from uh, other domains. For example, it's, I just learned recently about this from the 
uh, marine research institutes, they have a, a quite a big effort of bringing together tools into a whole marine data portal. And um, this also includes the Central Data Hub and Pangea, which is more of like also publishing data internationally and uh, publicly. And um, I guess there is a lot to learn like when we talk between these communities about our solutions. Now, it's not necessarily feasible when we are talking to people about supporting them, for them to upload their data to central um, servers, or, um, to central access points. That's why I'm looking forward to the workshop today. I think data that is a great solution for this decentralized data handling. Uh, we will explore this for uh, our future work uh, it is based on a Git and Git large file storage um, solutions and can also track changes to your data and therefore keep a full uh, provenance record. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this as well. Now, once we have the data in a way that we can analyze it, next step along the way is um, how do we uh, actually do that? There is a wide variety of software tools we use for analyzing uh, the data and we run into imprecise specifications of how to run software on publications, on websites all the time. This also often includes incompatibilities between packages and for some, sometimes also lack of support for fixed versioning in the applications that we are calling. Don't know who here has used Fiji and update sites. You will always get the latest version of an update site and this leads to conflicts all the time. If you talk to a computer scientist, they will tell you this problem is completely solved. Because we have virtual machines and for especially we have containerization, which is a bit simpler to handle than virtual machines. You can use the, the kernel of the operating system, but you isolate on an application level. And this, makes, this enables us to reproducibly analyze data. And in practice, we do not really need many people that use containers or especially know how to write them. And uh, this uh, is uh, one of the challenges, but the other challenge is also that there is a variety of language and frameworks here, and we need to include interactive graphical user interfaces into these routines. And we need to not just share specific softwares that we are running, but specific software use cases um, to solve a specific problem. And that's why we have developed Album. This is, was initiated by Cal Harrington when he was still leading our group and is now maintained uh, mainly by Jan Philipp Albrecht, who's also here with us in the room, and myself, and uh, with help from Lukas Rikert and uh, Maximilian Otto. And what we are focusing here on is to make uh, replicability user-friendly as possible. Our vision here is that if someone has a problem, Usually they would try to figure out which tool is the right one to use and they are quite overwhelmed by this. But with Album, we imagine that the research group can share a catalog with specific solutions to specific problems independent of the application. The application just comes in a second step. How does this, um, and for this we provide a, a graphical user interface and uh, command line tools and we are executing each solution in a separate virtual environment. Solutions, therefore, can um, uh, also include uh, documentations and like dependencies for the switch environment, and then they, they are wrapped into a Git repository catalog, which you can then share with others. <coughs> Let me quickly chit wait. i show you how that looks like. Okay, so because this um, catalog is a Git repository, we can host it on GitLab Hub or GitLab, for example, and then also generate uh, websites where you can browse through a catalog of solutions. This one is one that stores visualization solutions, as I was just um, sharing in a seminar. This could be an Apari. You can click on a solution and scroll through um, the metadata here. They, they can have arguments, and then there's a uh, further information how to run this from the command line, but you can also actually use uh, the graphical user interface of Album. Here I have already added this catalog to my local installation. 
I can uh, browse through the solutions from here as well and launch them. So this is just launching Napari and uh, when it's installing, it's automatically taking care of installing the virtual environment for this solution without you having to write any anything like on the command line, for example. You can also imagine that this solution would call a specific plugin for Napari. You can basically all, uh, write this, script this in these type of solutions. Now, um, Ah, this is not that spectacular, it's Napari, hey. What we envision for the future is that we can use these websites to actually uh, write down best practices for specific topics like visualizations independent of the tool. And then from the website, you can click on something that will automatically add this catalog to your album. I have already done that here, uh, but um, just for the sake of it and uh, then you see here there's more documentation and you have these white boxes that are auto-generated uh, representing specific software solutions that you can then launch directly from this um, browser view in the catalog. And this documentation here goes through mesh generation from TIF, TIFFs and then visualizing these meshes first in VTK and then later in Blender. And uh, it automated graphical user interface here automatically generates the interface for the arguments of the solution and makes, for example, Python routines quite accessible, but we also use this to launch Java applications or uh, other binary applications that are just automatically downloaded in the background. You can also inspect the arguments here on the browser, it's all um, automatically generated and actually inspect the source code just super briefly. A solution is a single Python file that includes what, what we are running here, uh, in this case, VTK. And at the uh, very bottom of this file, there's the core of the album solution, a setup method that includes all the metadata. So really try to make it easy so that you can have one file that includes all the information and wraps an existing application for a specific use case, including the dependencies of the Conda environment. Okay. This does not solve all our challenges. The next step is how do we actually include this into repetitive complex software use cases? And uh, here again, the challenge with image data analysis is that we have human in the loop that we want to um, annotate data sets and visualize data sets. And it's not all possible in like, automated uh, um, applications running in the back end. I want to highlight the bio, in, uh, bio image, IO initiative here. This was initially um, built for running uh, advanced AI models uh, directly also from the browser. And this, uh, you can contribute your own models there via GitHub, but by now this also includes data sets and applications and you can build um, workflows there. I think uh, we might have uh, added some um, redundancy to what they have done and we will work on uh, integrating closer with existing solutions on the workflow side here. Uh, in the next year to make sure that this all works nicely together. I also want to mention NIME. It's a, a great tool for graphically designing workflows that also work very well on large scale data and are optimized for that. And uh, what we are in our group currently uh, exploring more is SnakeMake, which, the, which is a Python based uh, workflow tool and also supports actually virtual envi environments. I have mentioned a, a, a variety of tools now and uh, the last section of my talk I want to state is that technology will not save us uh, to really get to reproducible and replicable image data analysis routines. Uh, what we really need is to communicate more within our communities so that we come up with best practices and standards. And uh, here I want to mention the quality assessment and reproducibility for instruments and images in light microscopy initiative. Uh, Christopher was planning to be here. I don't think he made it, maybe for the workshops, but they are eager to talk to everyone from the community. And they have published a really nice community developed checklist for publishing images and image analysis that includes steps for reproducibility aspects. 
And there's also the NFDI for Bioimage Consortium that was just recently funded. Oh, for the people in the room here, I'm really sorry about the pixelated images. I usually give talks on Zoom. Um, there is a, a task force here for bioimage analysis as well, and Ella from my group was here, and she also wanted to be here, but I don't think she is as well. But uh, if you are interested in this, please also go and talk to us. Now, um, last but not least, the, there are many gaps still in this view. When we talk about sanitization, there are many things that we actually still need to do research on. That's why it's super important for Helmholtz Imaging, for example, to also have these research units as part of our team. Here's one example from the DKSZ research unit where they looked into how labeling instructions matter for our biomedical image analysis and how they matter for, make, for making an, um, uh, annotations replicable as well. And they figured out that most people don't even provide uh, labeling instructions, and then the quality of the labeling instructions has a really high impact on how well one can replicate them. I'm extremely grateful for these platforms to support sustainable, reproducible analysis routines. I think this is really important because we have too many people that come and leave the field, and then we have tools that are not maintained, and these um, platforms can solve as as they can serve as an anchor to kind of stabilize this and find best, best practices that we constantly work and improve on. And for this, I really want to communicate with the community to make sure this uh, matches your needs. So please reach out to us. I want to give a big thank you to the Hammonds Imaging team and my team especially, Jan Philipp Albrecht and Ella Bari, who are research software engineers, Amadou, our PhD student, and Ella, our administrative support and uh, Maximilian, our student helper. And thank you again for your attention. Thank you.